uh, Mr. Eric S. Gray, for you all who don't know. The man's put a, at least a decade worth of work in, you know. Uh, name is Countless Books. He has a new project out. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, how many books, how many novels have you written? I got about 13, 12, 13 novels right now. 13 novels that you've written? Right, right now. And what without about, a, without, without any anthologies, just the novels that you've written? Just the novels I've written. Right now. And what period of time? Since 2002. So it means he's stepping to the AM. He's doing a book and a half a year at least. So um, for those that don't know, name some of your books that you that you some classics that you pen. Well, I got my first classic, Forty Call, Forty Call Sixty Nine, um, Love the Gangster, Great Baluzo, America Soul, Money Power Respect, Nasty Girls, It's Like Candy, um, Peace of New York, like One, Two, and Three. What else? I got um, One Life to Live. When you first started to now, like, how's the recession affected what the quote unquote game is or what the, the actual business of it? See, but one thing I said, I don't really, that recession story, I'm saying, if you if you grind, you know, hustling, it don't affect you, you get money no matter what. But me coming in back then, I we started this because we had love for it. You know, we, I mean, I'm saying, cash got love for it now, but listen, I didn't know I could become a writer. Right. I didn't know I could sit right here and do a great carpet. In front of millions. Word up like, oh, what, me? So it's like, I had love for writing because where I come from, Jamaican Queens, you know, I've seen a lot, been through a lot, family, friends, so I felt I always had a story to tell. I always wanted to grab my audience, be heard out there. Right. What's the best way to be heard? Let's do a pen. Right. You know, a book, a book could go so many miles, right. overseas, whatever. Right. A book could last, I'll be dead and going, my book still be on shelves, whatever, be pushing. Right. You know? So I felt that I wanted to be a voice. I wanted to be that, that, that guy out there that 10, 20 years, 30 years from now, my grandkids are picking up my stuff. They couldn't even walk in. So, but beginning the game, it was like, you know, we we were brand new. We didn't know nothing about no royalty. We didn't know nothing about no 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 um, publishing. No 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 not nothing. We didn't, we, we didn't know nothing. So we came in there, you know what I'm saying? Fresh, clean, whatever. You know, expected millions. Right. You know, but you know how it is. You know, you know that first check like, and I gotta work harder. But um, between now and then, I felt that everybody now, even rappers, gangsters, and everybody else want to come and want to come and step into my lane. It's just cool. I have no problem with that. <laughs> but they come into my lane. I've been doing since 2000. I've been I've been writing since 94, 93. But I've been publishing since 02 or 03. Okay. So what I'm saying. So now we do in my lane, you know. But everybody sort of got stuff to tell. So I felt like everybody says you're getting saturated, which I say you know what it is. It's not. Because you go to California, you go to Texas, you go to Arizona, they still haven't heard of Heavy Woods. They still haven't heard of me, right. Trudge. Like, right. Coach went to ever a new book to them out there. You know? Right. So, but you know, but you got cats coming in that are doing good and some are doing bad, you know? Some are doing it for the for the thrill, you know, for the money. I mean, you, you're always going to do it for the money, but, you know, do it the right way. Right, right. You know? Do it, do, do it, do it respectfully. Right. Don't come in there trying to jerk people, you know, and, and, and push people to the side, take you the shit after one book, you know. You got you to pay your dues in this game. So how, how, when do you consider a veteran in the game? What point is it that you feel as though you age your dues and you can kind of put Man, your feet up a little bit? Once you hit that three book mark, you can say, listen, once you, uh, you, when, you, when you drop your first book, that's cool, you did your first book, that's cool, I can respect for that. Right. But that don't make you an icon, that don't make you a legend, you did it, do it. But you know what, do it again. You drop the second book, do it again. The third, do it again. And what you, once you show your readers, your fans, whatever, that you, you're competitive with this shit, that you constantly can push out material and not just trash, but some credit put from some good, good reading knowledge showing you good money. You know, just do it again, do it again, do it again. You know what I'm saying? After, after one book, don't make you more stuff. So you would say at least three books, that's when three you Three books. After, after three books, you know what I'm saying? You, that, 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 that shows the audience, your fans, your readers, that, you know, you can do this. This is what you go for. You know, then, then also go out there and network. I'll tell you something. You can write, you can write a book. You know how to network and market yourself, promote yourself out there on the streets or in, in these companies. You know what? You're dead in, you dead in the water. But you got to get out there and talk to people. You know, have people know your face, know your name. To me, I'm trying to become a brand like Pepsi, Nike. You know? I want people to see that name, Eric S. Gray, and be like, yo, I know that dude. Oh, word. That's that dude that that so and so. Yo, he, he, you got fire, yo. That's what's up. But I want to be that brand, yo. And how to become that brand? Yo, step from the ground up. You know, like you said, I've been out there since the cold, fall, winter, rain, whatever. 
D.C., Maryland, um, South Carolina, Chicago, St. Louis, Philly. Philly. We count on one another. Delaware. Philly is different occasions. Canada, though, we, we, we do it all over, man. You know what I'm saying? So we, we put, we, yo, say we, we wore our shoes doing this, man. Yeah, we, we, we walk we these dogs. We walk these dogs. We walk these dogs. So that's paying your dues right there. Okay. But you know, you, when, when your face is shown in so many cities that they got to know who you are. Or they see your face, like, hey, I, I, I know you from somewhere. I know your name from somewhere. So I'm saying, thing you do is just networking, you know, constantly putting out material, you know, and just take your time and doing it right. Don't rush it, don't rush your book because you feel like, you, you, you know I'm saying, like people rush your book and then you rush your book. Damn, really? It, you got your money. It comes out, and in this trash. Oh, oh, oh we got the dog G in here, y'all. Let her go, though, man. Appreciate you coming out. Yes, sir. Kevin yeah. Brown. Don't the whole thing. You know, but I'm just saying, just do it right, man. You know what I'm saying? Do it right, then you gotta do it again. When your book come out, make sure it's, it's edited, the proofreading, the cover, the synopsis, everything is, is done correctly. So when they see your book, like I say, come to one thing. If your package ain't right, you know what I'm saying? Your book ain't gonna sell. Consumers so will let you know. Because like I said, they said, uh, um, don't try to don't try to cover by don't try to put by its cover. Let me tell you, we all do. Ain't that true. And the title too, you have a fire, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta be different, unique. But do it right though, you know. Alright, well we're here with the, the reason for the film. Uh, you know, we are here with, with the with the subjects and the producers and everything. We got Kevin Brown and Mills Miller and we're here doing a damn thing with Broken TV. So how'd you come up with the concept for the movie? How'd you all come up with that concept? You always take that why one first. Always, why you always no, give me that's your favorite one to answer. Want to do world reversal? Want nah, to do nah, reversal? Well, basically, man, uh, without trying to get too long-winded, um, I got to take it back a little bit, you know what I'm saying? When I first self-published my book, okay. um, it wasn't really no outlets for street and urban books and all that type of stuff, so um, we created the Urban Bookstores. Okay. UrbanBookstores.com, so okay. um, with the UrbanBookstores.com, that influenced the film. Like, yo, you know, it, it ain't really that many outlets. There's no outlets, there's no magazines, there's no websites, there's nobody covering it, there's nobody looking out for it. They didn't even know what to call it at that time. He just said, hey man, we gotta create some type of platform so these authors can showcase their work. Right. And with that came the film. You know, we focused in school, uh, pursuing filmmaking and digital media, and then we just came together and started everything that we're doing now. And that's how the, the, the idea for the film project came to Okay, absolutely. The so, idea basically was influenced from the website, Urban Books. So, what, what year did you first uh, publish your book that you came out in? By the, by the way, tell everybody the, the, the name oh, of your title. Oh, uh, 2005, I still published my, my first novel, was, it was titled Two-Face. Okay. And um, how long did it take for you all to finish the movie? Um, yeah, no, wow. I'm not, I'm not wow. I'll get everything. Wow. How long did we take to finish the film? Yeah. Literally, um, what, three, four years, right? Something three like that. Three years. Okay. It feels like more, but today is the grand finale. I, I, I personally say today is the day we finished the film. Okay. So today, you know, we, we got it up in lights, we got it here at Tribeca, it's, it's viewing for the world. It's been trailers out that you've seen probably, but right now today feels like it's the grand opening, you know what I mean? Okay. So, um, what new things did you learn about the industry uh, as you began production? I'll jump in on that one. I'll, I mean, that a lot of these cash stories was real. Mm -hmm. Not, not, not a lot of them was just writing, just to write a lot of them actually lived and stuff, but it was writing a lot of these guys in prison, you know, going through, through, through the rough situations, you know, hard times, and, and they actually poured that they sold into the books. Mm -hmm. So being as though it took so long for you all to finish the movie, and that, like you said, a certain level of uh, reality, and that you all saw a writer, at this very moment, what does this moment feel like right now for you all? It ain't even hit me yet, to be honest with you. It hasn't, I mean, not, not, that's not a bad thing. I mean, it just hasn't even really hit me yet. I mean, I'm so, I just feel like me personally, I'm so humble and I'm so down to earth. You know, like, it's just like, I just did this with, with, for you guys, people that's out here. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. It's not really about me. You know, I just tried to tell somebody else's story and wanted to just showcase. It's not about me at all. Right. So I'm just like, I'm just, I'm happy you guys out here want to interview me, ask me questions, take my picture and come out, come out here. You know, I had somebody come over to my Oklahoma. Right, wow. I can't even believe that. Wow. Texas? Yeah. Wow. So how'd you all go about getting the financing uh, to fund the movie? I think I'm going to answer that, man. Um, basically, everything that that, you, that we did was basically an out-of-pocket expense. Self-funded. Self-funded. We didn't wait for no, for no grants. We didn't make no loans that hold up the process. We just picked up the camera and just went through. What do you know now that you wish you knew before making the film? Hmm. 
Um, just a, basically for me, just a little bit more preparation. Um, a little bit more organization. Uh, I would say trying to honestly work like six months in advance. Basically, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's really filmmaking, photography, anything that you want to do. It's no secret, man. You got Google, you got books. Right. You got uh, tutorials online. I mean, if you want to do something, it's there. Just do it. Right. You know what I mean? And that's the attitude that we had. Everything that you see is, is self-generated, man. Self-generated. Self Everything is self-generated. You know, uh, created for nothing. Yeah, correct. Other than, you know, myself and Kevin, we got, you know, people who help us out all the time, who help us behind the scenes, you know, making this thing, putting it together, like today, running around, and things like that. But for the most part, everything is straight off the top of our head. You know what I mean? From creatively to, to, to technically down to, 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 to the team. Do you see any, any um, different, some good content coming from independent publishers and um, any diverse stories or just still kind of just stagnant? You... Me personally, I, I see some growth in some areas. Other areas still need a little help. I just think that it just goes back to uh, the individual. You know, they're just not doing research. They're just either trying to do everything themselves. They're not, they're not getting no consulting from the right people. People acting like they know what, what they're doing and, and, and when they don't. And this is really no secret, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to pull back all the smoke and the mirrors and peel back the layers and get to the meat. So it ain't none of this is really no secret, man. I mean, if you want to do something, just do it. Okay. And if, and if it looks, if your, if your product looks horrible, you're the only person to blame. Really. And how you feel? About Ignorance. That? I mean, I, I definitely agree with what he said. He kind of took the words out of my mouth. But uh, to reiterate, I just want to get what you said. All, all it takes is hard work. You know what I mean? Like. It, it's not easy, you know what I mean? But if you apply yourself consistently, consistent every day, you will eventually get there. It's going to take time, but you'll get there. I want to thank Kevin Brown. I want to thank Mills Miller. I want to thank Treasure E. Blue. I want to thank Iris X. Gray. I want to thank Anthony White. I want to thank Jason Claiborne. I want to thank Tamika Newhouse. I want to thank so many people, especially I want to thank my boy Maxwell Penn, one of my partners in Grind, you know, for helping me doing the interviews and things of that nature. Like I said, I have a lot of footage from that premiere that I have to show. I can't show in this episode, but I'm going to show all of it on my website, www.brokenenglishpublications.com. You hear me blast it many times, so you know where to find me. www.brokenenglishpublications.com. You go on the Broken TV tab, and from there, you can see all the footage that we did, the behind-the-scenes stuff. And you'll see more of your favorite authors being interviewed about the premiere and about their works in general. There's going to be more episodes coming. I told you, you'll be doing big things because that's what Strivers Road is all about. Getting from one level to the next. And we're striving all the way to get up there. So, let me get out the way. Sean Hicks, Broken English Publications, Broken TV, Strivers Road, the TV show. See you soon. Hip hop literature live. What we trying to do is let the kids read. That's it. And a lot of people may not understand it, you know, because they're like, wow, we don't even understand the language. But the kids do, and we're influencing them. And, and somewhere along the line, we're going to have the great authors or the great narrators or the great screenwriter. It's a garden, and we just sprinkling it, letting it grow. Hip hop literature every day, you know, we live it.